All right, what's up there, YouTube? Okay, so today I'm going to show you my latest unboxing. I'm doing a home theater in my other room uh, next door, and uh, not really a home theater. Basically, I'm I'm doing a room that has a big screen TV, and I'm putting a surround sound system in it. So it's like a regular living room, but with a surround sound system. small speakers like hidden speakers and stuff and I, I've been going back and forth on what I wanted because I didn't want I love my favorite speakers ever are PSB alphas which are these little bookshelf speakers but they're like this big and they're bookshelf that I would have to put you know put shelves up or mounts up on the wall to put them up there so my idea was what if I looked into in wall speakers you know, some decent in-wall speakers, and then I could put speakers in the ceiling and speakers in the wall for the surround sound for the back and speakers up in the ceiling for the Atmos uh, surround sound. So I want, it to, I want it to sound like a theater, but not necessarily look like a theater. I think there's a lot of people out there that don't have, you don't have a, a dedicated room that you can put a surround sound home theater in. For those of us that are like me, that have just a living room and a dining room and other room like that, and you don't have a dedicated room, how could you make a home theater sound like a home theater and a big, you know, 70 something inch flat screen TV and a 4K and all that stuff and have it sound really big, but not look really big. And the, the ticket I found to that is the in-wall speakers. I picked up a set of in-wall speakers for the front first. And what I'm gonna do is these are, Mica, Mica series, media series, M8S's. They're eight inch in-wall speakers. And I'm gonna do a quick unboxing. I've already opened it, but I'm gonna do a quick unboxing, show what you get in the speaker package, and show and, and let you guys know my experience and installing these. And we'll go ahead and put these in, install them in the wall, I'm gonna show you where I did it. Last week, um, I mounted the outlet behind the TV and I ran my wire inside the garage. See, the, the wall is on the backside of the garage for that the same wall that the TV's on. So I can climb up in the attic right there. So it's actually really convenient. And if I can't get down in the wall, I can run pipe on the backside. I'll show you, I did that for the outlet because the, I had an outlet on the backside, but none directly under the TV. There was no outlet directly under the TV that was on the sides. So I just, put an extension box on the box in the outlet in beside the electrical panel and ran a pipe over and up and set another box and put another outlet in it. Thank you know, I was able to put it on the GFI and then off the regular circuit, I ran it through and up and into the outlet on the back side of the TV, which made it real convenient to have the outlet for the TV. But I'm gonna put the receiver underneath the TV in a separate cabinet. And then I'm gonna put an in-wall center speaker these speakers in wall in the front and these were inexpensive I'll, I'll let you know what i think of them after they're installed but I, i'm not looking for i'm not looking for music sound like i want it to sound good for music and i want to be able to set and i think it will still sound good it's an eight inch speaker eight inch uh two-way speaker so it should sound pretty decent for music it's not it's not going to be a psb speaker it's not going to sound like dedicated bookshelf or, or, or floor standing speakers, but it will sound pretty decent, especially for the fact that you can paint the grills and stuff on them. All right, so in the box, you get these little plastic, I guess these are like little sticky things for the grill maybe, maybe for the, for the speaker grill. I'm just gonna hold on to them. They come in the top of the box. And when you open it, you just get some styrofoam. In the back here, you get a template. This is also a paint shield. See, cutout template tells you where to cut on the outside. The inside is the paint shield and the outside is the actual outside edge of the speaker. It comes with instructions. So we'll pull those out real quick. Here's the instructions. Not much of instructions. Just basically tells you speaker wire, removing the grill, mounting the speaker. 
uh, inside the speaker frame, blah, blah, blah. It tells you, but you can, you can pretty much lay this over the top, lay this template over the top and tell exactly where the dotted line is, is where you have to cut. And then this inside piece, cut out template. Inside piece is what you put behind the grill if you want to paint the grill. So I'll show you that. So here's the speaker. Just throw the box to the side. Here's the It's pretty heavy. So it's a Mica two-way eight inch speaker with a speaker grill. There we go. These were on Amazon. So there's the speaker. It's a pretty nice looking speaker. It's got a soft dome tweeter. It's like a one inch soft dome tweeter and an eight inch woofer. And uh, then the backside has these little clips that just spin out and you know clamp down to the wall. So you can always take them you can always loosen them and take them back out after you get done. See, you just spin them off to the side. They call these like dog ears, I think. But they spin off to the side and then you just spin them and they snap on. They snap down onto the wall and you tighten the screws up right here. And it pulls it up against the wall. So when you want to paint this, you basically put this template. You can see the template's as big as the actual speaker. So you take this inner piece out here, and that's the size of the hole that you cut is this outside little edge, which puts it outside this little plastic piece here. Then you tear the inside off, and that goes inside the grill. Basically, you, you cut off this outside template for the cutting the hole, to trace the hole. And then the inside template goes inside this grill. You can pop it inside the grill and paint over the entire outside surface of the speaker. So you can paint this grill and this. And what I would do probably is put the template on there, paint it, and then take a, a small, like small stiff brush and poke the holes back in the grill to get the paint out of the holes. And you might want to, you might want to actually take this paint this off separate not on the don't paint it on just put the insert in paint it real easy real quick and then dab the holes in it and then set this aside to dry with the holes already punched through with the thing and then take this template stick it on the inside like stick it inside here and paint this ring separately the outside of the ring after it's on the wall so you just paint that and then when you put the grill back in, you might have to touch up a little bit to make it match so that this is painted the same color as the wall. I wanted it to hide, to hide the speaker. It, you can't really hide it. It's a big speaker, but you kind of can. And I guess those little foam things, I didn't see them anywhere in the thing, but I, I'm assuming they go inside here. Maybe they go on the backside. I don't know. I don't know where those little sticky things go. But anyway, so that's the speaker. So the tweeter can be aimed towards the listening area. I don't think so. Does it, does it? Oh yeah, it does. The tweeter is directional. You can point the tweeter down. Oh, that's that's cool. I didn't even notice that. So I can I can angle the tweeter down or towards the you know in and down a little bit so that it's pointed towards the listener. So when it's on, when you're sitting on the couch, the tweeter's pointing directly at you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys where I'm going to mount this speaker. Okay, so. Basically, I'm mounting the speakers on each side right there. So this is just a typical, regular living room. You know, got a couple couches, some things. Um, you know, ceiling fan up there. And I don't want anything, I don't want to turn this into a home theater. I want to have, I'm buying plantation shutters in the, in when tax season, when taxes come back. And I'm going to put some plantation shutters up there so I can actually black out the light. But most of the time, it will be at night when I'm watching movies and stuff in here so i wanted to put a couple speakers there speak underneath a cabinet underneath that tv is being replaced with a bigger tv i'm just waiting because i'm going to get a 70 70 something inch probably 75 inch tv or something like that i'm going to get a really nice big 4k tv there that's just a regular 1080p 50 inch it's a small tv but i'm replacing that tv so i'm going to be putting the speakers 
in the wall here, right there. And then I'm going to put a center speaker right underneath there, underneath the TV in the wall. And then another speaker right here. This is my idea is to put one right here beside the thing. So I have a speaker, a speaker over in the corner. Now I measured on the other side of the wall, my electrical panel is 12 foot from the door. So my electrical panel is right here. So I can't, I was going to put the speaker a little bit closer to the wall. I don't want it right beside the TV because that, what's the point? That doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't know why people do that. You need some separation with the front speakers. You need that sound to come from over here from the left side. So if it's real close, you can point the tweeter out a little bit and get some separation, but it's still not the same as moving the speaker over and pointing it back towards you when you're sitting in the couch. So that's why I wanted, plus I didn't want this speaker here. I wanted it over here. So if I decide to get even a bigger TV or anything like that, I'd still have room with my speakers. I could go with a humongous TV. I could go way over to here with a TV and still have plenty of room. I could put a projector up if I wanted to, but I got a ceiling fan up there, so I won't. I won't put a projector in here. It's not, it's not a home theater. It's a living room that I want to look like a home theater. So you notice there's no cords and stuff hanging down because I mounted an outlet. Actually, it's a surge suppression, suppression outlet back there in a, a box. And I'll show you on the other side. Let's go in the garage and I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I did out here. So, oops, I had the, uh, the attic door open. Basically, what I did here was I took a, this, this outlet was here, this GFCI right there, that was already there. So I put this extension box on it. The outlet was in the wall and then I put the GFCI and I ran this pipe across here. And then I set another box here. I have to get a plate for that. I was short on the plate and I put this outlet on the GFCI. So that, that outlet trips, this outlet will trip off with that outlet. But then I ran another set of wires out from just the regular circuit, ran it out the back of the box with a, a uh, Romex. And then up above, I put up, mounted the box for the TV on the back side of this wall. So the TV outlets up there because there's no outlet down here in the, in the wall. This is the room I have for my for my other speaker. So I'm gonna take the panel cover off, make sure no wires come out of the side. When I cut the hole on the other side for the speaker, I'm gonna look up, pull the insulation out and see if I can look up and make sure that the service wire that comes out of the panel doesn't go that way. Like it doesn't go up and turn left alongside the bottom of that, that ceiling joist. It shouldn't, it should come straight out. When I get up above, I'll be able to tell if the service wire comes out and goes, cause the service, the overhead service is on that end of the that end of the house so it comes out and it's got to go through the attic and then go out there so i'm pretty sure just looking at it that it goes out yeah it comes out right here it probably comes down inside the wall and goes out that way that's the ground going down so it comes out of the back of the meter and goes into the wall and then up into the attic and across through the attic all the way across to there. So that wire has to go up and into the attic. So I, I'm going to make sure I don't hit any holes in your wall. Make sure that there's no electrical things. Now me, I can fix it, but I don't want to have to spend a bunch of money on a service wire if I don't have to. I don't want to short out a main service wire and trip the fuse out on the telephone pole and then end, end up having to stay here all night fixing what I, what I had to fix because I was stupid and didn't look and see. So back here, the other option I have is drop the wire down, put a, another box and a pipe and go across and then just go straight through underneath with a pipe and set another box down below and just go straight into the receiver. So I don't really need to run it up and over if I don't have to. I can do that one up and over or I can even go down with that. I ordered some some new recessed lights, like 10 of them, recessed LED spotlights. And I'm gonna put those all around the living room in there on the walls to give it more of a, you know, a better look because I'm an electrician. I've been doing electrical work for 
20 something years i do i also do you know videos and photos so i can do electrical work <laughs> if you didn't know that about me that's something about me i can do electrical work but i am going to do um a video on doing the lights and the two ceiling speakers those are coming tomorrow so anyway back inside all right i messed up i went ahead and mounted it over here and got it completely in and wired and then i went ahead and cut this one out and dropped my wire down before thinking oh no i forgot to do a video on how i'm doing it so what i'll do is I'll explain when I do the center channel, which is this one right here, going right here, center channel, and the two up in the ceiling. There's going to be two up ceiling mounted overhead, and then two in those far walls over there, little round ones. But it's the same idea. So basically, it goes like this. This mounts in that hole. I cut the hole, leveled it, measured over, got beside the stud. There's a stud for that outlet right there. Um, went up top, and in the attic, there was actually already a hole drilled with foam in it so i just pushed my fish tape down and then pulled this wire back up into the attic which i'm going to later route to down below here to that jack down there for the surround sound anyway so you put the wires under the little screws little spring terminals Just, it says to take the insulation out from behind the speaker, but it's fairly thin. It's paper. I don't. I don't think it's going to hurt. But if I hear vibration, I'll, I'll take it back out and take it out. That's it. That's all you got to do. Tighten the screws down. You can do these with a screw with a battery drill, but I would much rather put these screws in with a screwdriver so that you don't break the little tabs. Those little plastic tabs break really easy. And uh, if you do it with a regular with a battery drill, you could possibly break the tabs real fast. I don't want that. I don't want that camera falling. The little clips flip out and catch onto the back of the sheetrock. So that's what it looks like. The speaker on each side. You can see one's, one's closer to the TV, so the TV has to shift to the left a little bit to make it even between the two speakers. So the TV needs to come to about here to make it even with the two speakers. But I'm also changing the TV to a 70 inch or bigger. I might get 75 inch, something big, and put it right in there. But the speakers are the same height. That's what they look like. So when I when I do the one in the middle and change the set, when I change the TV and do the center speaker, I'll probably do the center speaker first and the and the surround sound receiver and stuff down there, and do the rear speakers. When I do that speaker, the surround sound and the center, then I'll go ahead and make a video showing the TV off and how I fish the wires down. I'll probably have help too because I had to do it by myself, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But I'm used to it. But anyway, when I do the center speaker and the surround sound and the, and the wires from the TV to the surround sound and to the center speaker down through here, then I'll make a longer video and show you how to do from start to finish the speakers. All right, YouTube. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Like and subscribe. See you. I'm out. Have a good time. Bye.